talk a little bit and uh, know that you're going to have plenty plenty of opportunity uh, in this process that we go through right now we're more involved in more of a uh, a high view look at what we're doing. Um, we're, we're looking at facilities across the board for the city. We have many, many facilities that uh, would not withstand a, an earthquake. And that's what we're looking at. And uh, the resiliency of those buildings. And we've taken park and recreation out and looking at that as uh, uh, one unit of this bigger discussion we're going to have. Uh, I think in some aspects, park and recreation has a lot more moving pieces, and we really want to have community input into that process. So that's why we've started here. Don't think that there are going to be any decisions that are that are going to be um, earth-shaking happening at the council level until we've gone through, I'd say, a one to two year process. Uh, you know, I look at that and you go, well, that's a long time, but it, it takes time to get, uh, tr have transparency and have uh, individuals participate. Uh, with that being said, a part of the presentation tonight, um, the park and rec uh, group has asked us if we so desire um, that we'd like to uh, start a facilities uh, uh, review committee. And uh, I think that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 individuals. We know that uh, Susan already has 30 plus names of individuals that have stepped up and said, yeah. And so we're going to be talking a little bit this evening about uh, putting a facilities leadership team together of uh, Jeff and Jenny and uh, Rich and Susan uh, that will make appointments and interview individuals so that we can have a broad spectrum of those that are going to be in our um, in our advisory committee. But more importantly, as I've told everyone, um, that is not limited just to 20 individuals. It's everything we do is open and it's transparent. Uh, I've taken myself off of every committee uh, except for one, and I go as a guest. And I go as a guest because I can learn and I can understand, and they always will open for guest comments in our meetings. So I, I think the message I wanted to share at the beginning of tonight's discussion is we're all involved in this and we're going to take testimony. I, I tried to share that last uh, at our last meeting, but I don't think it was heard. And there's a lot of people that are concerned that we're moving forward very quickly and we're not going to listen, but we're going to slow down and listen. It's going to take some time. So. With that being said, again, I welcome everyone that's here this evening, and I've uh, called the uh, work session to order, and so I'll call on our park and rec. Susan. Great, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor and Councilors, I'm Susan Muir. I'm the Parks and Rec Director, and this is a follow-up to your October 8th work session. That was really an opportunity for the consulting team to give you their final report on the study that they embarked on about nine months ago. Um, and tonight, we kind of look at this as an opportunity for you, for you to hear from your Parks and Rec staff about what we think and some of the um, steps that we think are in front of us to help continue this dialogue forward. Um, we noticed there was a lot of discussion at the last meeting about staffing, and so we're going to give you some background about programming tonight and what that takes and, and the importance of that in the whole overall plan. I'll tell you, I think one of the most important things we know out of that master plan is it needs to go through a process to get right-sized for McMinnville. And so there were some numbers tossed around and there were some um, org charts in the in the master plan. And, and as the mayor just said, we know that's not final, um, but that, that was what the consultant was, was here to do, was give us their best guess about how to manage a program like that. So we're here tonight to give you our perspective um, because you have a great Parks and Rec staff. And so we want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, another comment that came up that we really appreciated at the last work session was Councillor Mankey's comment about resources and what kind of resources it takes to get to even the point that we're at right now. Um, you know, I think you said dig into it, but be transparent about how many resources this can take to even have this conversation, much less move it forward in the process. Um, we would say yes, yes, yes. This has already taken a lot of resources to get to this point. But it's really important to know that we see this as a good alternative to help us improve our services. And right now we're kind of held back. 
by our buildings. Um, they're barriers to us be delivering great services to our community. And so, to, well, 2016 is the first time I saw a newspaper article related to one single joint facility. So the community was talking about it three years ago. Um, when I arrived in 2017, probably without a doubt, the number one comment people who came into my office to meet me said was, we can do better with our facilities, both indoor and outdoor facilities, we can do better. Um, and we agreed as a team. So we got together as your Parks and Rec team and decided what, what should we focus on um, over the next couple of years. And really to be able to move forward, we need to address the building situation. So we, we aligned ourselves and said, this is our number one goal. This is our one common goal as a department for us to focus and bring this conversation forward. But it has many, many steps, as you mentioned. We know we're, it's gonna go through a lot of iterations and a lot of community dialogue. So we feel really good about where it's at. We clearly need to give some more information about things. Um, we've set some things up on the web page that you'll hear a little bit about um, so that we can move through this because we really don't, right now with the condition of our buildings, we think we need to have this dialogue regardless of what the outcome is because it's the, it's the way we can move forward. We're gonna be putting money into some facilities. So the question is, do we put it into the existing facilities or do we take a big leap and put it in a new facility? So um, we recognize that the speed that this goes on needs to include the public, needs to bring the council along, it needs to bring staff along because we know that's the only way we're gonna be successful. So we're hearing all of that as we go through this conversation with you. Um, so I'm gonna kick it over to Ann and Katie. They're part of the team, um, Ann Lane and Katie Noyd and Rob um, Porter and Steve Ganser are here as well to talk about what we do in Parks and Rec with the facilities and relate this a little bit to what the consultant said a couple weeks ago. Go for it, Ann. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to have us here tonight. Um, as we've been moving along through this process, a lot of questions have come up and we know there's going to be more. Um, we're ready for that and we're really encouraged by all the questions. Uh, that tells us that the council is, is interested and cares about parks and recreation, tells us our community is interested and cares about the future of parks and recreation in this community. And uh, to us, that's a, a really good sign when people are uh, leaving meetings and talking about uh, the process, talking about the future, and they just have a lot of questions that they want answered. So. <clears throat> And uh, as more questions come up, we encourage people to continue to reach out to us, send us those questions, stop us on the street, email us, call us, whatever, we'll talk about it. And we'll, if we don't have an answer, we'll put it on the, uh, on the board to get an answer for you, so. Uh, as part of our effort to be transparent through this process, we are posting all questions and answers related to the project uh, at the website www.whatdoyouthinkmac.org. This is a living, breathing site. Uh, we continue to update it regularly with information, uh, reports that come in, uh, presentations that we do, uh, and we'll continue to add to uh, a question and answer page that will just keep growing as this project goes along. So any questions that come up, that's a great place to look as well. We'll be adding answers as we can come up with those answers. We don't have all those answers just yet, so we're getting there. So as I said, we are getting there and we've got the ball. We know where we're going. We've got everything we need to get us there. So one of the things that came out of the October 8th city council meeting uh, were questions about staffing and programming uh, and how maybe those relate to a discussion about recreation facilities. Uh, they're all connected. Uh, the staff, the, the facilities, the programming, and our community, they're all connected. And we believe that recreation programming provides our community with opportunities to connect and engage with others. Uh, the experience usually takes place during a very fun, active experience, and uh, we're happy we get to bring that to you every day. For a vital parks and recreation program to exist, there's a lot of components. 
it's a lot like a garden and your garden needs to be tended if things are going to grow and prosper in that space. In the image, the soil represents our facility. That's the conduit. That is the thing that you've got to have to make things grow. The sun, that's the effort that goes into growing our garden and that's your recreation staff. But we also need some rain and that's your recreation programs. That's the fuel. That's the fuel that helps grow that garden. The seeds are our community and that's your result of your efforts of pouring in the rain and the sun into a healthy soil. So a building needs programming, it needs staff, and it needs participants to thrive. A gym space transforms from being blank and bare to a lively multi-generational community event with music and dancing and laughter to fill that space. <clears throat> when recreation staffs, when recreation staff programs a room like this, which is a meeting room, it becomes a gymnastics studio where kids imagine themselves as superheroes going on adventures and much more. An open pool space becomes a fitness class, a community swim lesson space, a competitive swim environment, and when that's, that happens, when recreation programs are put together by staff. On the left is our current program areas that we spend our time working in and creating and developing. On the right, that includes those same programs, but it also includes our wish for future programs. Those are the programs that we need, that we want, and that should be available for our community. We know this because they told us through the survey and also in person. We hear it a lot. So I'd like to share a couple of highlighted stories for you about some participants in our programs. So this slide, uh, we wanted to talk about what is programming. All of these raindrops are showing different pieces of what it takes to program an activity or an event and what we have to coordinate and put together um, before we introduce a new program to that community. As you can see, this takes brainstorming, staff training, instructor recruitment, promotion and marketing, and a lot more administrative work. So there's a lot of raindrops that need to be in each of these. As we talked as a team, uh, we talked a bit about how we were gonna present tonight and we decided that we wanted to tell you some stories about participate, participants in our program. One program that we have at the Senior Center is a line dancing program. We have a member of our community who has suffered from a br traumatic brain injury who now has an opportunity to rebuild cognition through repetition and sequence of dance steps. That is recreation programming. One thing that I love seeing is watching the kids grow up through our programs. I get the opportunity to teach a Start Smart sports program, and I see the kids learn the skills, the parents make friends and find ways to teach their children these sports skills, and the joy in their faces when they score a goal. Every year I see kids age out of my little kid programs and move up to the youth sports leagues with Steve. It makes me sad when they move up, but I love seeing them move up. It makes me happy to see these kids enjoying the sport, seeing their parents mentoring their, ki their own kids and other kids as volunteer coaches, and all of the families enjoying this time together. That is recreation programming. The Wartman Park Art Gallery is a great artistic and creative outlet for members of our community. One local artist displayed her artwork at the Wartman Park Art Gallery for the first time 12 years ago. She sold a few pieces and her work has been booked solid in various galleries, wineries, and restaurants throughout the valley since that time. That is recreation programming. 
Our Tiny Tots indoor playground is heavily visited throughout the year and is a great place for people to make these connections to their community. We see and hear children as they enter the building and make their way to their spaceship, which is the elevator. <laughs> the children play, explore, make friends, learn social and communication skills, and use their imaginations. The kids can't wait to come back to see their friends again and play with toys that they don't have at home. That is recreation programming. There's a little girl who was born with a very rare genetic defect that affects development of her motor skills, muscular and digestive systems, and she gets to engage with her peers in a gymnastics program. That is recreation programming. Recreation programming is a safe haven, an outlet, a respite, an opportunity, and a connection for our community. As we've said before, for a great parks and recreation program, we need all of these things, the facility, the staff, the programming, and the community, and able to thrive. So what do we need to do to get there and sort of right size it like we talked about? We need to start a discussion about having an advisory committee come together and kind of right size some of these things. Um, so as I mentioned in the staff report, we have broadened the discussion to be a little bit more than just the parks and rec buildings. And so we've been talking about um, the city hall facilities and the fire admin facilities and the library as well. And we've all talked about the next steps of the process. Um, in attachment B, you'll see that we've proposed an outline for the committee, and I want to say we want to kind of bring back the name of it a little bit. We don't think the name is quite right, but um, Jenny and I want to brainstorm a little bit more about that. Um, we don't want to call it the rec, so um, put a pause on the name of it, but we think the rest of what's in here is important for us to think about in terms of an advisory committee. Um, we, think, we think the name could be more reflective of what they're going to do um, and what we want them to advise us on. Um, but what we tried to develop is because we have so much interest in this and we have a lot of um, groups that want to participate is we tried to develop a filtering process and looked at the lens of MacTown 2032 in order to get there. So we just developed a purpose and value um, statement for the committee and set a, you know up to 20 people depending on how many we um, interview. But I think we may be up to 40 um, interested people as of today. We're, we're, they're coming in regularly, which is great to see. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the process and what we look for and really setting the stage to make sure that we meet those equity objectives and those inclusive objectives and goals that you outlined in MacTown 2032. Um, and we'll use these um, ideas of what we're looking for to draft the interview questions so that as we go through the selection process, we can kind of ferret that out, make sure that we have um, unique representation and representation from those voices that aren't typically heard at this, um, at the table. And Susan, yeah. if, I, if I can point out just the council, um, you know, I appreciate how staff are going back to our strategic plan uh, 2032. That is a strategic plan a goal number five. And uh, our goal is to create a culture of acceptance. Well, it's right there. But we have specific objectives under that. And I think from a council perspective, sometimes it may be wise for us to take the time to go back to the strategic plan and see how staff is implementing on that plan. So I just bring that out as it falls right within the body of work that we have, uh, uh, we're going down. So. Great. Thank you. So for tonight, we know the time got short two weeks ago. You all didn't have a lot of dialogue. Um, we kind of have want to kick it back to you now. One, do we have any additional questions that we should add to the list? As Ann mentioned, we don't. Yeah, we don't have. Um, Ann's going through the slides that have the advisory committee on there. That's fine. Um, we don't have all the answers to all the questions, but we want to know if you have more questions that we can add to the list and put on our um, our list to address. There's, some of them are going to take time to get together the data. Um, some of them are going to be cross-departmental questions that we have to answer. Some of them will provide a written memo for you. Some of them will be able to say, you know, the first one I think is, can you include MEDP uh, as a partner? So we'll make sure that gets in the final report. So some of them will be, yes, we did this, and some of them will be in-depth answers, and some will probably be yes or no answers. But we're just going to plod through that. So what we want to know from you tonight is, are there additional questions that we can add to the list? Um, you know, you heard Ann and Katie talk about programming, which was the piece that we didn't talk about a lot as we flashed the numbers up of the additional staff. So we wanted to make sure if you have any questions about that, we can answer those. Um, are you okay with us moving forward to um, recruit for the advisory committee and then any other loose ends from the last uh, work session? So 
So let's open it up to uh, councillors to give uh, your thoughts on that. Uh, it, I know we've talked about that advisory committee, but what from your perspective does it need to look like? And I'll just open it up, anyone? Uh, I'll go ahead, Sal. This is ready. Um, um, well, first of all, yes to the advisory committee. As you know, I'm very excited that you're moving forward with that. Um, I did have a question about the process um, from this point forward. Um, I understand that the main thrust of this relates to the recreation facilities, obviously, but initially when we started talking about the replanning of recreational facilities, the library was part of that conversation and um, broader cultural facilities were also part of that conversation. I guess I'm curious, how does that still fit into the picture of redevelopment of the recreational facilities? Um, and, and Jenny can answer anything. I would say we're, we're wrapping that piece into the next phase of what I think will be done by a consultant to determine um, programming needs for library and cultural spaces as well before we make any decisions about site location, <coughs> anything like that. That's all I had, thank you. Okay. Any other comments or go ahead, Zach. Thanks, good work, that was fun. Um, I miss my garden. <laughs> um, couple thoughts um, to your list of questions. One thing we haven't talked about um, and it, I could be specific and then it could be more broad and touch on some you know, specific in that it's an area of interest in mind that I think is important moving forward. And it touches on one thing that's been talked about, something to the effect of um, how are we gonna ensure that we're building a facility now that will last longer than that facility did? So in that vein, I haven't seen any discussion and I'd like to see stuff going forward in the advisory committee and as we move forward with designing the facility, but durability and sustainability measures in our public facilities and this one in specific. Um, so if you could just put that on the list of questions, uh, sustainability measures, what, what are we looking into for this facility and all facilities going forward? Um, that would be great. And then another question I had, and it's a little bit in terms of what Sal was talking about, but maybe up to the whole facility study, we're launching with this on this specific task, but where are we at and what are we gonna do with continuing the discussion about the fire department and some of the other buildings that aren't specifically included? Uh, just quickly, we are including the admin piece in this next phase of this. Okay. So we heard we heard you say at the I think it was at the July meeting, wrap those other buildings that showed up in the red bubble diagram of the no return on investment when we first finished the facilities condition assessment into this. And so we'd already started on the contract with Ballard King, um, but the next phase of that, we'll look at the fire admin piece, we'll look at the city hall admin piece, and we'll mm. look at the library and future use of buildings if they become vacant. So in other words, if we build a new aquatic center somewhere, the future use of that footprint over there would also be looked at as part okay. So, and that'll be your, that staff leadership team that was identified talking about that, or that will be to the citizen committee that will be part of their discussion points as well? I think both. Okay, that's good enough for me. But it wouldn't be this particular, um, <clears throat> Uh, advisory committee that would be looking at the whole picture. This is just, my understanding is park and recreation, correct, that we're talking about? We would, uh, clearly Jenny and I are working on this so that it can include library and cultural pieces okay. of it. I think the the admin offices and the support offices would be a minor part of it, but if it makes mm -hmm. sense to add an admin floor to a building that we're looking at, then, um, you know, Chief Lightford already knows the square footage of the admin support offices that he needs for next phases of fire admin. Um, so we know that we should look at that and see if it makes sense to co-locate that with one of our future buildings or one of our current buildings to figure that out. I don't wanna speak for you. No, perfect. So, so you know, we'll keep the committee pretty focused on that kind of stuff, but just know that your leadership team is talking about that and how do we make sure we move all of these things forward and not make one bad decision because we didn't have one of the players at the table or that kind of thing. So it's an ish. And we're still figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, I, I do want to clarify that um, this next step and next conversation and the advisory committee that we're discussing 
it would, it's not just about recreation facilities. It would be including the library and the cultural. But we might need to have a little broader scope of those involved then if it's just not around park and rec. Yes, which is what we're already looking at and deciding. And one of the reasons behind the, um, you know, Susan saying we want to pull the name back a little bit is because the, the words she, that, that were presented are great, but the acronym indicates recreation. And so we want to say, mm, we're going to try and figure something else out that, that talks more to children, families, seniors, um, and as Susan said, the work that the advisory council would be doing. It makes sense. Um, well, the last two. The appreciate you guys' timeline for getting things back to us and decisions of what you need from us to move forward because I think unless we keep pushing that forward, the cost to do nothing was pretty impactful in my mind. And so the, the sooner we can continue to move this along, the better. And as we do that, we'll move from what we've been presented so far to me was a sort of a blunt decision-making tool that was really effective. And as we move forward, I hope we can sharpen that tool to figure out exactly, I guess as Susan says, to right size it for our community. So thank you. You're up. Okay. Wendy? Um, I thank you for all of the work, and I am in support of the advisory committee. I think that's a great next step for us. Um, a couple of thoughts that I have, actually, um, one of the um, comments that uh, Mayor Hill mentioned with regards to the mix of people on the committee, I know it doesn't specifically say it in here, but it sounds like you guys are working on, I know with Mac Town, um, 2032, we had a specific number of people from different segments to make sure we had the right mix and there wasn't an, an uneven voice that was being heard on there. So I assume at, at, we'll see something about that later on after you guys are done kind of flushing that out. Yeah. More specific? Okay. And then um, with regards to, I know there was a lot of feedback. I wasn't here at that, so I'm sorry if this was already covered, but there was a lot of feedback about um, the staffing, and I know it was some of it was programming. It would be helpful for us to be able to see specifically what is facilities based versus what is programming based, and then also, and this is probably going to be with out of the advisory committee work, um, but also for us to be able to think about um, if we can't do everything right now, you know, like how we grow over time. Uh, obviously, we're going to, the facility should be right size so we can grow into that, but we might not be able to do everything at once, right? So that helps us to be able to see uh, if you guys are thinking about, you know, how do we scale this to where, you know, these things would happen first and these things would happen next and, and adding that over time. So, um, but thank you for all of your work. It's really exciting. Thanks, Wendy. I actually had another question. Um, we weren't able to participate in the public conversation as much because we had the council meeting and people were still putting up pins on the board and stuff of where they would like. What were the top three or four locations that people were identifying? You know, um, I think, we're, did we put the picture in the... Is it in here? We pulled it. You pulled it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I would say there was a pretty <coughs> equal distribution of dots in... <coughs> Interestingly, quite a few of them were outside the city, northeast <laughs> of the area. So we didn't, you know, that was a really, uh, you know, a really big guesstimate of where things would go. And so we put, we tried to direct a few people back inside the city limits for some things. But I would say downtown, um, over near Joe Dancer, sort of south and then northeast were kind of the clusters. And it was, <clears throat> there were, they were pretty even, I would say. Maybe mm -hmm. the north one was a little lighter than the others. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that, and um, we didn't quantify it. That was our first attempt, but there will be a lot of opportunities to look at sites and where it's happening. But it's one of the questions that we get the most is where's it going, where's it going? We need to do a lot more looking at that. Um, we had um, uh, Marty Purdy, uh, no, excuse me. Um, a couple of folks who have submitted materials today um, Marty's one of them. Marty's one of them. Um, I'm wondering if we can get some of the materials that were sent to us added to the public record. Uh, On the web page? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, we'll start. That's a great idea. We'll yeah. start um, an area on there of testimony or comments that we've received and just keep growing it. 
if Marty, I think, was representing um, the pickleball group. Right. I responded back to him a bit, and um, but I, I think I think it may be uh, appropriate just to. Well, I think that goes. What do you think about McMinnville.org? Is a is a place to have some of the dialogue? Is it not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, I was I was specifically referring to Ken's Ken D Diener's uh, oh. yeah. uh, drawings as well. I think that would be uh, a good thing to add into the record. Yeah, Ken's had that opportunity to meet with m numerous counselors and I think some staff, and and has some great thoughts. Uh, Just given how much how much he's talked to all of us, I think it'd be good if that got added in. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have those electronically, if you could pass those along to me. I, I've talked to him about them, but I don't have them electronically, so he emailed And me. Ken has those, so. Okay. You can email them to me, Ken. Yeah. And Marty is here tonight as well. Thank you, Sal. Uh, Adam, any thoughts? Um, definitely appreciate the <clears throat> list of questions that you guys have assembled and in favor of moving forward with a committee. Um, I guess the main thing for me is when you guys are interviewing candidates for this committee is that that position is a big ask, 18 months of two-hour meetings and making sure that, you know, A, they, they meet the criteria of the position they're filling on the committee, but B, that they're fully committed to attending, you know, the mass majority of those meetings at other committees that I've sat on. People are very excited the first initial couple meetings, and then we might get nine months down the road and now we have 11 members continuously showing up and the other nine are wafting in the wind. So um, I would hone in that, you know, people are going to need to schedule their vacations and things like that around being at these meetings if they want to be committed to the process. So that would be the one thing I would take away from the committees I've sat on, which I'm sure all you staff are aware of that. So. Um, that would be my only concern with that big of a committee is that we have like a micro committee within that committee that's very active and engaged and then the, the other members just aren't fully engaged or taking it as serious as some of the others. Thank you for that. that. That actually is a really good comment about also making sure we keep the inclusive and the representative aspect of that going. So we'll, we'll think about an interview question related to that. Kelly, any thoughts from you? Well, I appreciate all the questions and stuff tonight, and uh, I think we definitely should do the advisory committee. So thank you so much for all the time and effort you've put into it so far. I know there's going to be a lot more, but we appreciate it. Thank you. You know, from my perspective, I, uh, in so much of this strategic planning that we've gone through uh, over the last three years, a lot of the consultants that we've worked with is they they start our discussion about dreaming big, and and then really putting some priority around, and in that this fits under the you know the area of of of. Uh, uh, of uh, engagement and in, in, in being inclusive, I, I think we, we need to listen to ideas. I think every idea has merit in some form or fashion, and especially when it comes to uh, parks and recreation. And, and so I appreciate, you know, Sal saying, you know, uh, Marty's thought, uh, there's a group that's very passionate about pickleball, and we've We've listened to them and we've taken some of our courts and converted it. Um, but I think we th need to think big and that's where we get that input from our, our citizens. Then it becomes the hard task of putting some priorities because there's price tags to everything that we look at. And when we're not only looking at facilities that house programs, facilities that house fire, facilities that house administration, facilities that house uh, uh, maintenance and public works. I mean, they're all in the mix in some form or fashion. Uh, the public has a very vested interest in parks and rec because they, they participate in that. Uh, if they don't have a real passion for fire and safety, they better because <laughs> we're saving lives and, and we need to do the right thing from that perspective. Uh, 
park uh, or maintenance roads if we don't take care of our roads. I'll tell you, we hear about it every day, that pothole here or there or there, or when it snows and we don't have a, uh, we don't have uh, snow removal equipment and, uh, you know, a week goes by and we can't get out of our homes. We hear about all of those types of things. So it is a process and, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm glad that we talked about that this is an 18 month committee, you know, before we can get to a point in understanding uh, what a bond or a levy may look like, that's a five year process possibly. You know, we've got the park and rec bond that goes off I think in 2021 and that's nine million. We have a much greater need. And so what we need to do is our due diligence and then we need to put our financial caps on and then bring a plan forward that takes care of our priorities across all that broad spectrum that we've talked about, but is appropriate to go to our citizens and say, can you support us in this? And um, we all know that, but I think to set our minds very focused that that process is what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and it's going to be hard decisions. I promise you it's going to be some hard decisions. I've talked to so, I mean, within the last couple of months, I've talked to so many people about this process. They're, they're engaged in this process and they feel it. And the thought that we've got to keep it downtown because it's the core and it helps the vibrancy of a downtown to others to say, let's get out and put it all together and have a, a clean slate so we're not curtailed by the land and, and those types of things. So there's some very difficult decisions coming up, and but I'm very proud of the council that in our initial meeting, you guys came and says, do we look at some of the historic buildings in town, i.e. the community center and if we had to, could could you see us vacating that building? And we had that tough discussion around that. Or, you know, where in the locations of some of these types of things. So I, I don't mean to be going on too long other than this is a process that truly, I think, will take a whole community and then we'll bring it back to the council and we'll have hard discussions and then we'll be working with our, our financial group and then we'll be back out talking to people when it's all said and done, then we have to go back out and talk to the people and say, what is the amount of money that you'd be willing to support us in because that goes before the people. And a couple of us have been through that process, whether it's this building or the building across the street or the, the transportation bond. And that doesn't happen just by itself. And the city can't drive those processes. It has to come from the council. We have to take ownership of it. And with the, the hopeful support of the community, it works. Mm -hmm. um, in many communities, it doesn't because they don't do it the right way. But I think we have a track record that really shows that we do it the right way. We have transparency and we have a lot, a lot of input in the process. So those are my two cents worth of nothing, but it, <laughs> it's kind of where I've been from that perspective. So any other thoughts? I'll turn it to staff. Did you get the input that you needed? And we've got staff scattered throughout. Did you get the input that you needed to get to us at this point of the discussion? So Susan, I'll just kind of turn it back to you and see if staff would have any, because we've got some out in the audience. And sure, no, it's great discussion. Uh, we're, I will tell you we're invigorated every time we come and talk to you. Um, it helps us think about how we use our resources over the next week and looking at the buildings that we're in because it is, it is a day-to-day -day situation for us in our buildings. Um, the only thing I would say that we suggested in the staff report is that for the sort of interview panel of looking at the candidates, we suggested that um, we add a city councilor to that and then also, um, Jenny, I've been talking, we said one community member, but we actually think two community members would be good. So we, Jenny and I are working on the community member aspect of that, but if you all want to add a city councilor to the interview panel, so to speak, for the committee, we'd be happy to include somebody. 
Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking in my mind that, you know, we need to have the business community represented. I think we need to have the building community represented a bit too, because those are some of our uh, most uh, consistent customers are our, our, our builders and developers working with the city and at this particular time I know the community development office is a is a stick built building and it has some resiliency there it wasn't high on our list of having to do much to but as we consolidate and look at some consolidations um, you know one of the one of the elements uh, of our strategic plan is says that uh, improve access by identifying removing buildings barriers to participation, whether it's on the committee or just with the city. I, and, and we just have to s celebrate the diversity and the different opinions that we have. Those are all a part of the objectives that we have in our, in our strategic plan that I think work into what we're doing. So uh, Susan, absolutely, you know, the things you're talking about. So again, staff, any, in, anything that we've missed the boat on? I mean, we've got community center represented. We've got parks and rec. We've got senior centers. We've got the pool. We've got we've got it all represented here. We've got a few minutes. If I mean, this is your time to, <laughs> to address the council. <laughs> I think our community is ready for this. Um, all indications tell us that. Um, it's amazing how every day you can come into work and there's a new voicemail, there's a new email, there's somebody new that shows up in front of you and they say, tell me more about this advisory committee. Tell me more about the future facilities of parks and recreation. How do I get involved? Um, there is there is energy out in the community that just is continuing to build on a daily basis. That's awesome. And I, that's a spread across all of our programs. Good. Well, if that's it, um, we'll, um, I'll call one more time for any comments or questions. Um, Mayor, was Su Susan, were you asking if one of us counselors wanted to be on the interview committee and you were <laughs> wanting us to identify that this evening, correct? Yes. That's <laughs> okay. Is uh, there anybody that... I'd, I'd jump in and be happy, happily be a part of that. that. But I, I know you. I know, and I recognize that I may have to jump in the pit to fight to the death with anyone else that has to <laughs> wants to be a part of that. I, I know probably three on the council that want it. So <laughs> I'm not going to be a part of the committee, but I will be at every meeting. Okay. <laughs> this is just the interview panel to make a recommendation <laughs> about who sits on the committee. Okay. So um, it'll be just a hopefully like a day where we interview. <laughs> We'll, staff will take the applications and we'll um, narrow those down and then we'll schedule some interviews. So just offering if somebody wants to be on that day. That'd be. Do you guys want to make that decision now or do you want to debrief after the meeting and let Susan know? I'll just open it up. What, what's your thought? Well, who wants it? <laughs> Raise your hand. I expect to see at least two hands here. Zach's hand and Adam's are up. Could you use two? Okay. Are you sure? Sure. Yeah, we can use two. Yeah. That'd be great. Okay. Well, thanks for the discussion. Uh, thanks, Katie and Ann, and for your presentation tonight. And so we'll go ahead and close our work session. Thank you. And council meeting will start at seven o'clock. So we have an opportunity to, to visit with your neighbor for a minute or two. Okay.